All right, let's tackle the truss. Truss ABC, it's a simple one though, because it's only three members, um, so it won't be too bad. Uh, first part, what are the three different sets of equations that are considered while solving the truss? Um, again, this is a static equilibrium, uh, which means it's not moving. So if it's not moving, the sum of the forces in the X are gonna be zero. The sum of the forces, that's a horrible sigma. The sum of the forces in the Y are gonna be zero. And the sum of all the moments is gonna be zero. Everything is zero. Everything adds up to zero. This thing is not moving. If it is, well, that bridge has a serious problem. So, uh, let's draw a free body diagram showing the reaction forces at joints B and C. Okay, so let's start with a um, more simpler, uh, more simple diagram here. A, B, and C. This is point A, point B, joint C. We have a force being applied at A that I'm going to call that force A, which is 945 pounds. Um, now B, uh, according to the triangle here, is a hinge, um, a hinge joint, so it's going to apply a force in the vertical, in the horizontal, um, but will not apply any moment or anything, so we'll have two forces at a hinge. So that's reaction force BY and reaction force AY, I'm sorry, AX. I'm, we're at point B. Add point B. So reaction force BY and reaction force BX. There we go. Uh, at C, check the diagram, we have a roller, which means it would allow it to move left and right. It's not going to apply a force horizontally. It will apply a force vertically, however. So we have a reaction force C in the Y direction. Um, so that's a free body diagram. Now we need to cal calculate what these forces actually are. Uh, so we start with some of the forces in the x direction, equal to zero. Lucky for us, there is only one force in their x direction, so RF BX is equal to zero. That was easy. One down, two to go. So now we set up, we, we've used our some of the forces in the x, now we go to some of the forces and the Y. It doesn't really matter in what order you do these in, I just happen to go X, Y, and moment um, any time I do them. So, some of the forces in the Y, now we have, I'll always have to add up to zero. We have RFBY, RFCY going upwards, so RFBY plus RFCY has to be equal to FA coming down, so that's FA. Uh, now we know FA, so RF BY plus RF CY is equal to 945 pounds. But that's all we know. We don't know either one of these, and that's as, as far as we can go with this equation. Uh, so now we want to set up our moment equation. So, let's see, the sum of the moments, again, has to be zero. And we can choose any point that we want to, but if I pick B or C, that'll cancel out one of these forces, since one of those, like, if I pick B, let's say, um, RFBY can't cause a moment around B because there's no distance between it, no perpendicular distance between it and the joint itself. But RFCY will cause a moment uh, counterclockwise and, RF and FA will cause a moment clockwise. So I'm going to choose some of the moments around joint B. Um, so I have force times distance. So RF, uh, excuse me, CY um, times the distance here, and I need to check back to my original drawing. We had 12 feet plus another 3.75, so um, the distance here is 15.75 feet across the base of the truss. And I need FA, which is causing it to rotate the other direction. Um, and that is, according to our diagram, 9 feet above this. Now I want this distance, because I need a perpendicular distance that this is acting from, right? So, but it's nine feet high, careful. Perpendicular distance means the force is acting this way, vertically, I need horizontal distance. If the force is acting horizontal, I would need the vertical distance away. So, I need the actually the 12 feet away. It's acting 12 feet away. So, times 12 feet, scoot up here. Now, I can solve for RFCY. 
if I have FA, which is 945 pounds, uh, times the 12 feet perpendicular distance, um, divided by the 15.75 feet that I can move over from the other side, that would tell me that RFCY is equal to, which is in my calculator, RFCY is actually 720 pounds. So, two down. I know RFCY, I know RFBX is equal to zero. Um, so I can actually erase that uh, vector from my free body diagram. RFCY is equal to 720. It's a positive, so I chose the correct direction originally. Um, and now we need RFBY. Well, I can take this right back over here. So RFBY is equal to 945 minus RFCY. Again, I just moved it from one side to the other. RFBY is equal to 945 minus what we found here, this to be 720, minus 720 pounds. RFBY turns out to be 225 pounds. And we found all three of our reaction forces, 225 pounds. Great, now in the next part we'll start going into calculating the member forces.